are going to start talking. Oh, sorry. I forgot to hit record. Sorry, Cindy. Um, we are going to um, use the Equip for Reading Success book. So in the slide, you're going to see it on the right-hand side is the Equip for Reading Success. And yesterday, when I spoke to you about the past, we talked about how we could use those one-minute activities. And uh, Cindy and I were talking about this today. This oral component is where you are going to get the best bang for your buck in terms of uh, the assessments. Once you see your pre-data for your students on their past, you use these one-minute activities and target each of those levels as you go through it in three weeks. Even if you hit one, two, three levels, you're going to see a big change in your students. This is where on your, you're going to see like the the best growth in your students 100 so we're recommending please 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 find that 10 minutes or so of your time to go through and do some of the activities that we're going to talk about here if you're familiar with flyleaf we've talked about um the say it move it game okay so that's one of the ideas that you can think about when think when kids are thinking about hearing sounds you can also use fingers for blending so we can talk about saying like, mm, at, and then we say, Matt, what is it? Matt. So it's all of these oral pieces that are going to connect with students along with your one minute activities. Okay. Um, we, I don't want to go over the phonemic awareness and phonological awareness piece. I think we've, we've gotten that piece. You're okay. Everyone's okay with the difference between those. Yeah. Okay, so Sydney, do you want to go to the next slide? And then we'll kind of walk you through a little lesson that we've kind of, we've taken one of the Flyleaf books as an example, and we've extracted the pieces that we want to use from there to really make a condensed lesson for you. And stop us at any point, please. If you don't know something, you want to know more, or you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. All right, so we've been sitting for a long time, and I was the icebreaker one from yesterday. So I thought, Lindsay, we will do a one-minute activity so they can see how short it is one minute. But that means you're going to have to turn on your mics or your camera for me now, your mics or camera. Yes, if you're virtual, you can do this activity. You don't have to just be in the classroom. So you can either turn on your mic or your camera. It's your choice for this game. I'll give you a second. Okay. I'm pretending that we noticed that our group of kiddos were all missing K, level K on the past. So for one minute every single day, I'm going to do letter K. Actually, I'll probably do it twice. Once when we first get there and once as an exit ticket when they're heading home. But here we go. Say try. 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 Now say try, but don't say er. Tie. 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 Say flee. 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 Now say flee, but don't say oh. Fee. Fee. See how I'm holding my fingers up? I'm giving you little bits of clues. Say bland. 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 Now say bland, but don't say oh. Bland. 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 Now I'll take away my hands. You're getting really good. Say claim. 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 Now say claim, but don't say oh. Came. Came. Say grow. 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 Now say grow, but don't say er. Go. Go. Say steal. Steal. Now say steal, but don't say t. Steal. Say trick. 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 Now say trick, but don't say er. Tick. 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 That's it. That's the one minute you can turn your, your face off and you can turn your voice off. And that was just level K, because maybe I noticed the whole group needed level k and maybe i'm going to go back with another level later on for just a couple of kiddos but that's quick and that's fast we took it at a slow pace i think i've seen it go even quicker so if you do that like lindsay said daily they'll end up having k i almost promise you i've seen it happen a number of times they will by the end of it have k or at least have k with a greater consistency so that's the way we could start off every day or we could finish off every day with a little literacy kilpatrick one minute activity the other activity would be say it move it from flyleaf so i'm quickly going to switch over to the other screen and bring up the online flyleaf just so we know what we're talking about this is the flyleaf.com and it's either a band or the reading portal so i found a book and throughout today we're just going to talk about dot likes to dig so I could click on the story here and find out about little Dot. He digs, he buries a mat, just giving you context. 
He takes the socks out, okay? We understand what it is. And also, there's the smart board files. So I've got them open here for my virtual people. If I've got that downloaded on my computer, there's the say it, move it game that we talked about. We're gonna do dot. So we're gonna move the dots down for d, a, t, or dig, d, a, g. We've got that one going up here. So when I was in the lesson, and I wanted to know these books are in the school. It was called Say It, Move It. And it told me which words to tell the kids to say and to move things. I've done this virtually where kids just get little cookies or crackers or something or um, little, little crayons and they say it and they move it right there on their table. And in person, it's much easier. Get some Unifix cubes or something and they say it and move it. That one's pretty good. Now, if you look over at Lindsay's tiny box, can you see it? She's trying to bring it really close. It's another idea for the virtual way. She's got a little whiteboard there with some magnets. And I'm going to call out the word mat. M -a -t. And they pull down the pieces. If you're virtual, I say, hold up your fingers. How many sounds did you hear? They hold up three. And we push it back in the circle. Really quick and easy to make if you're in the classroom too. Just draw a circle on something. The next one it said to do would be sit. sit. And we give any corrective feedback as need to. It goes to the four phonemes. So let's do one of those, Lindsay. Push them at the top. Let's do pigs. Pig. Four sounds, they hold up four fingers. These are both activities. Kilpatrick's minutes did not have any hands-on. It was all just in your head. And this one scaffolded a little better with the hands-on magnets. Questions about these two? Is this free or accessible to anyone? Yeah, absolutely. Flyleaf made these books and things free. So I just go to Google and I put in Flyleaf, and it either comes up as the Rock Band or the Flyleaf website. So it's super easy to find. No login needed. Just bookmark it. It's there for you, the book and everything. All right, Lindsay, I'm moving on yeah. to the next. Just remember, though, if you're virtual and you don't have the teacher guide, for example, if you're going to look at a focused a target skill with a student or a group of students, you don't have the teacher guide at home, the um, smart notebook file does not provide you with those words that Cindy and I just used. It'll provide you with all of the structures that you need, but it won't give you the actual words. So you can do two things. You can do one, bring home whatever grade level you're sort of at your school right now and borrow it. Or you can also look to the back of the book. You can see that Cindy opened up the back of the book and you can see where the targeted sound is. And you can also see a list of words that you can just extract to get them thinking about hearing the sounds in the word. So you could just say, okay, let's do dig, let's do tap. Let's do top and the kids get excited, you know, throw one in there. That's a four phoneme sound naps. <laughs> and you're really trying to get kids to really isolate those sounds so they hear it. And it's fun to play when you have a hands on piece. OK, so those are the two ways. Either kind of borrow it from your current school if you're virtual um, and ask nicely and they'll probably let you and or just do what Cindy just did and turn to the back of the book. Cool. Okay, sounds good. All right, so the next piece we want to think about too is once we hit our oral piece, we want to think about we need to maximize the explicit instruction that we give these students. They are only here for three weeks with us and we need to maximize every minute that we can with them. And explicit instruction is going to be the best way that you're going to be able to target that. Kids need to know exactly what it is they need to learn and why they need to learn it. Okay, we're not here for to any, no offense to anyone. We're not discovery playing here. This is like a need that we need to have. Okay. At this point, these kids are falling behind and we need to catch them up. So if we look at on um, the blue, the green box here, 
it looks like we have some flyleaf pieces. So again, we're going to always tie it back to flyleaf. There is a scope and sequence for flyleaf. So when you open up your phonics screener and you kind of get your data together for your students, you might see um, there's a, a targeted letter that most of your students are struggling with. Or you might see a group of letters. So like maybe it's short vowels, for example, or something that you could really hone in and target for those kids. You're going to see that on that scope and sequence, you will find find a connected book that matches that targeted skill. You as two educators of the room, depending on how you separate your um, instruction, maybe you do a whole group lesson and you target a bunch of pieces that all of your kids need. But then you might also find that small group afternoon time where we go back and we have to target something specific that those individual children need. So this scope and sequence might come in really handy and it's free on that website. Um, and it's also in the binders, in the foundational skills binder, um, in the flyleaf pieces in your schools. Um, and so the piece that they have that's really awesome is they give you a letter. They tell you how to make that letter with your mouth, right? The articulation gestures that you're going to use to form that, that letter with your mouth. It gives you the card. So the grapheme matches the phoneme. And then it gives you some targeted pictures as well in the Flyleaf lesson specifically. So that's in Flyleaf specifically. The piece that's beside it are other ways that you can tackle letter sound correspondence. And so if you think about the chanting chart... Um, that was back there. Cindy's going to pull. Um, some of you may have heard the, the words about around chanting. That's where you can get a really good bang for your buck because you can chant sort of all of the letters to get the sounds down pat um, with your students. And that only takes a couple of minutes. So you can see our timer here for that explicit instruction is about five minutes or so where you're going to teach them about the letter, what sound it actually makes and practice those sounds together. Um, if you're in a school, um, ver uh, you have the you have seen probably the lips that are in the bottom picture there. Those lips are also helpful to make the articulation gestures with a student. Um, we also have in the resources file at the end of our slideshow, we've put a bunch of resources in there and we've kind of we've put some of those cards in there for you that you're going to be able to use. Um, so like the one picture, I really love the simplicity of it. I'm not going to turn my giant chart stand around, but on my giant chart stand, I have a chanting chart that I used virtually with students that it was no tech. And I just literally, I would be like, okay, kids, turn the chart around. And we would like, I would chant the sounds with them. I'd have them all turn their cameras on and we'd, I'd watch them with their mouths chanting. Um, and in class, you just write it up on chart paper and away you go, or you can have it on the smart board, like the picture beside it. Okay, the really key thing here, though, don't forget letters and sounds so important, but we also have to remember to pronounce them correctly ourselves. So we have a little picture in the corner there that talks about making sure we take the a uh out of all the letters. So when we're chanting, Cindy's going to pull up that letter well, in a second, but the p, <laughs> Catherine, you're so funny, uh, the p, the t, the duh, um, at us as non-struggling readers don't have a problem hearing wa, a, t, er, but, and we can hear water, but a student that is struggling says wa, otter. What is a wa, otter? I don't know what that is. So you really have to fine tune and finesse your pronunciation yourself. And that takes practice. We've, Cindy and I will both uh, will tell you, like, it takes a long time to really focus on pronunciation, pronunciating those letters correctly. Okay, Cindy's up. Yeah, I was going to add to the notice in the games that we were playing, the one minute games, I had to be really precise with my say steal, now say steal, but don't say t, right? Really precise, not say t. I'm certainly not say, but don't say t, because it didn't, didn't say t that way. We put, um, we put a link into some of these things. So if you click on this one, and I'm hoping you've made a copy of the slideshow. So remember how you got here, there was a, a part for the slideshow because then you'll have these links with you all the time, guys. If you don't remember it today, you'll have those links. Here's a little chanting chart. If you click on it, it plays a video. I think of me saying, hmm, ah, that sort of way. So you could get the pure sound for the, for the sounds. Also, we mentioned chanting. Just didn't know if they knew what it sounded like, Lindsay. It would be like, my turn, mm, your turn. My turn, ah, a, your turn, ah, a. 
right? So they just coral it back. And if she is on um, virtual, they can be unmuted, maybe two kids a day, or maybe you just go crazy and have them all try it at the same time, right? All right, so the next slide's pretty, pretty much exactly what we said. You put the chanting chart up, you take turns doing my turn, your turn, and you chant it. And then you tell them the focus sound of the day, the focus sound of the week. And if I had to predict from filling out all those phonics screeners, it's going to be the vowels, guys. It's going to be the vowels. The I and the E sound so much the same with the I and the E that many of them. And then when you get into the vowel teams in grade two, that's the part that's tripping them up. So if you have a sneak peek, I think it's going to be, be that one. That's the second part of the program. Let's pause for questions about those things. Please stop us. Ask anything. <laughs> okay, so that's just was the letter of correspondence sound. Here's the next piece of the puzzle. So then we've talked about this idea of mapping words for instant retrieval. Typically, we've talked to them, they've been known as like sight words. But when you think about storing those words in your permanent memory, it requires that phoneme proficiency and letter sound proficiency. We must have mastery in those skills be to begin storing those words into our permanent memory. And so you may have heard the term. Um, oh, good. Thank you, Melissa. We'll undo those permissions, Cindy. We need permission for the chanting chart, she said. Perfect. Well, um, you, you may have heard the term orthographic mapping before, and that's where a student basically has to work through or map those words out enough times in their own brain to figure out, um, to make sure they've stored that correctly. Um, so those are things like sight words. So on the left in the green, you'll see um, Flyleaf does a really good job of puzzle words. Um, so from my... Um, experience with something like I am Sam, the very first book, you'll see that um, yes and I are considered both puzzle words in there because we haven't learned those sounds yet. Um, some of the sounds that you're going to find, some of the words you're going to come up against might be things like heart words, like the word the. A student typically in the past on a word wall, for example, we would have said the it under the T. Um, and then we would say, well, why don't you know that's the, it's under the t. And obviously, um, a student that is thinking about sounds thinks about the sounds the, and they hear th, which is a voiced th, and then uh, which is not making the right sound. And so this is where that idea or that term heart words has come through. Um, and so we know that parts of the word are sounding out correctly, but there are parts that just don't say the right thing. So they're also coined irregular words, puzzle words, heart words. You may have heard some of those pieces. So some of these sort of high frequency words, you also could have some time to share with your students to be able to have them up somewhere for them, maybe have them on little flip cards for them to work through. They're going to come across them in the decodable text that you're going to be using. So find those words in there and have some time. I think we said there's a couple minutes on our timer here where you can spend some time reviewing the puzzle words. We can shout them, we can cheer them, we can spell them on our hand. Maybe you have some time where they do some printing in Play-Doh or they uh, roll it out in Play-Doh. Maybe they print it in rainbow word writing. Any type of um, activities like that where they can continuously work on mapping out those correct sounds and the letters that make those sounds for those tricky words is going to be um, really important for those students. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, I'm good. All right, I was gonna say, let's check on our, um, in our Flyleaf online one that we had and find out what the puzzle words were for Dot and Dan. So I'm gonna close this one out and go back to our Dot and Dan book. And when I was going to the um, Dot and Dan book, you could find it on the last page or the smart notebook pile. Dot and Dan's focus is it. You're probably gonna remember this one, guys. I said vowels that like, so it said that there's gonna be some words that we, we will need for it here at our, her. Her wouldn't be one that they would know yet. And O is going to come up in the book that they won't be able to sound out. And here's some other ones that have happened so far in the series that will come up in the book that they haven't had. I know and you know that yes is not irregular. Yes. But in the flyleaf, they know you haven't taught the sound Y yet. 
before you've done this book. So until they're assuming the kids have never been exposed to word Y, it's a puzzle. But it, we know that eventually they're going to learn the sound Y and it will not be a puzzle. In my classrooms, I've played I spy. I put this one up on the board. I spy with my little eye, the puzzle word C, and someone comes up and points to it. Virtually, I put it like memory cards. I just covered it with little squares on a Google slide and they uncovered the blue one and the pink one to see if they matched. Just quick games like that, something fun. Natalie was saying earlier that we can really focus right now. We can focus on the skill and just tie the fun into what we're already doing that way. So that was an easy, easy activity. Flyleaf told me exactly which words to do. No need to recreate the wheel. It told me her, O, oh, and the other ones that we were going to do. Any questions about um, sight words, puzzle words, high frequency words? Again, just embed them in exactly the text that you're using, whatever decodable text you're using. Uh, we encourage Flyleaf. Um, but you, if you found other decodable texts, then you need to find those puzzle words that they may not know. Yeah. Hey, Jen. Hi. I just have a quick question. Yeah. So do you think like in regular class, we would normally like look where the most number of kids are at and then choose that book? Do you think we should be doing that? But for both going to do literacy at the same time with your teaching partner, maybe look at how you can split them into two groups and hit the most number of kids. Absolutely. I think between you and your teaching partner and the data, what, what your data shows, if your data shows like all students need something, then maybe there is opportunity for a whole group lesson where we can target more students in that area and then gap fill some of those other pieces where you're talking with the small group or if you and your teaching partner um i know who your teaching partner is um so if you guys like look at it and you're like actually we know we can crush this out in two small groups and really get bang for our buck then absolutely whatever okay. works for you and your teaching partner and your kids Okay. Thanks. And you might find, um, I know Jen's talking about some of the flyleaf pieces and, and typically uh, a flyleaf lesson, they would, you know, offer a five day sort of piece. But remember, this is, we only have three weeks with them. So you may find that you could, you know, do more than one book in a week or with one group. But also the flip side of that is these are typically our struggling students. So remember, struggling students need exposure to things far more times than a typical reader. So we need to keep that in mind, too, that we have to, if they are a struggling student, they're going to need to be exposed to the letter E and the sound E eh far more times than they would normally in a regular, if they were a regular reading student. Colleen? Hey. Um, okay, so the stuff that you're doing with like the puzzle words and stuff, where do where would we find that? I may have missed that, but like, how would we ac access that information to be able to do it with our students virtually? If you if you're vir you're virtually, Colleen. Yeah. So the slide shows, or sorry, the smart notebook files. Cindy okay. sent to the website, and under each book, those smart notebook files are free. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, so that, that's a great place to start and it will have all the little cards that are, and if you look okay. in the top right corner, it will tell you what the strategy is. And in that case, it'll say high frequency puzzle words. Okay. Um, just remember for the um, notebook files, they won't have the teacher guide. So if you're going to play, say it, move it with them, for example, as a good high yield strategy, okay. you'll have to look to the back of the book online to use it if you don't have a teacher guide that you can bring home okay okay thank you no worries great question and we love the questions we really don't mind the interruptions in that sort of way we, we want to make it so that you don't have your questions later when we're on the beach okay this is a great time <laughs> to ask those questions yeah please feel free we're here we want this to be as user friendly i know you've had a lot packed in for the last yesterday and even today was very um there was a lot of information so i know it's taking some time to take it in and sort of mull it over a bit too so um the next piece of our uh phonics instruction is a big chunk of the time so that's all the like doing pieces that we want we want to look at the application to our phonics skills. We wanna look at how we can map them. So these are a lot of like games and activities that are the hands-on piece where students can show their proficiency or mastery with an activity that you're doing. So like say it, move it, there was no letters attached, 
right? Because that was just the phonemic awareness piece. Now we can play other games like um, making words or word chains, if you've heard of that term before. We can use things like dictation, or Flyleaf calls it phoneme graphing mapping. Um, there are lots of different sorts you can use with students for them to be able to make connections to the letter um, sound correspondence that you're working through. This is all the doing, the hands-on. The kids have fun with these pieces. They love to get out their say it, move it boards, or they love to get out their little letter cards to use to make um to make words or word chains um so all of those pieces um you'll see in the green there are all in the flyleaf there are model lessons online that you can also see and also if you bring the book home they are going to give you all of the word chains and all of the words for the dictation and all of the sort pieces there for you cindy you're up do you want to talk about the orange cindy sorry the you want to those are just other games do you want to talk cindy more to it go ahead no that's what i was just gonna say and the orange ones are also good but you have to go elsewhere to find them so you have to actually click on this look at phonics book it'll take you to a link to some other activities that you could do and um word ladders is a nice one in there if you get tired of doing these activities um typically if there's five days in a week or five days of summer up in a week i would do a different game each of the days right? And you stretch them out. So there's a hands-on doing each one of those days. I want to pick five activities for the kids to do that sort of way. And this is going to be a good time. We're going to go and look at the, the games that were for Dot Likes to Dig. All right, Dot. Oh, sorry. Went into Dot, went into the smart board files. One of the things we didn't mention enough of was the blending that comes on there. When I, I click on it, the students will all say the sound D, and then they'll say the next sound I and the next sound, g. you can't see it because I'm not presenting it, and pig, and sits. And these are really good practice ones, but once we've gotten through the practice and we've gotten through the puzzle words, it'll get into the games. All right, the first game was the word chains. So if you're doing it um, virtually, you could use this to show. If you're doing it in a, a school, you could give each kid a little scrap of paper maybe there's a magnet letter that you had in the classroom that you had of your own maybe they're going to quickly write it on a scrap piece of paper lindsay's made it super simple on cue cards there she's got her letters on cue cards you just have to find some letters that the kids will be able to hands on and manipulate i suppose you could print off and photocopy but i don't want to promise that your photocopy your code is going to work but you could just have them cut out of this one if you were in the school and the list of Flyleaf will give you the words that you're supposed to say, because do you see that there's none here? There's nothing to tell me what word the kids are going to make. So that's going to be a little frustrating if you don't have the binder at home. If you do have the binder, it's going to be right here for you. Can you see? It said I'm going to make naps and then turn naps into nap. See, Lindsay's making naps. Good. Now, Lindsay, take naps and turn it into nap. Now take nap and turn it into tap. We're going really quick. I don't promise they'll go this fast, but do you see how she's using the hands-on activities? If you're um, if working without a script, you're going to have to be a little bit more thinking of what words you could make with this one. So I think I would have started with tap. If I hadn't known, I would have said, okay, let's make tap. Now let's change, change tap into nap. Well, then I could change it into naps. I'm not sure what else I could do. I might need to now push those all away and let's make dog and let's change dog into dig and let's change dig into pig. Do you see, it takes a little more thinking from the educator, but if you just jot that down, that's one, one day a week you've got done and pre-made already for you. The other activities I can see is the phoneme graphing mapping one kind of reminds me of dictation or spelling test. How do you do this one virtually, Lindsay? I have a whiteboard or on paper. And the only thing that you're going to not do is you would have students, you could say, make me boxes. So make me five boxes or four boxes. And oh, my marker's crappy. Sorry. You could have them make on their whiteboard or on paper. Right, I can make how many boxes do I need? Send four or five. I'll do four. So I can just have students, and I used to say to them, they would say, Cindy would tell me a word. Uh, nap, make nap. 
And then, and then I would hold, up the screen. There, I'd hold it up to the screen and she would say, great job, Good Lindsay. Job. <laughs> Love your lowercase a. Really nice to see that one. Now try just to erase the parts in the middle or make me new boxes for the next yeah. one. And they can make a list in order. They can keep going um, and they can just use paper or a whiteboard if they have it at home at, or chalkboard. Like kids love, if you're virtual, kids love to be like, I'm going to go around and get my mom, you know, like with this one for the making words, for example, the kids are like, I have the leapfrog game with letters, bring those. Or my brother has blocks, like who, they love finding the letters or they love ripping the papers and like practicing writing on them. I was gonna show on the book, there's the words you could use, right? If, if you don't have the scripts with you, what words should I tell Lindsay? I'm gonna pick them ones from the story. I'm gonna ch choose tip as the easy one and we're going to work our way up to socks because you got to put the ck in the same box because it's making one sound i think those were the activities in this one i don't think that they had another i did notice um the sound sort one for this one so i'm listening to here if it has an ah like bag an i like pig or an ah like box and the students can tell me which ones to drag and put in that way. Or if I was at a place, I could print it off and cut and move them. I might just do that at home, give one sheet and bring it in as a place they play when they enter and the other kids aren't there yet. Nice soft start. And then there was unscramble sentences we'll see later, but I might as well show you while I'm in it. It gives you so you can put it dot naps on the mat and the kids put it in order and they can tell you how the story goes. It suggests that you write it on little cue cards and have the children move it around in a pocket chart or on a table. That's a nice hands-on activity as well. I'm going to pop back, Lindsay, to see if we talked about all the, the activities. Absolutely. All right, so we have the word chains, the phoneme graphing mapping, and the sort. That sort just had pictures because it was from the early emergent. But if you move into the later grade two, three, it'll have IR, OR, and ER, and then you sort the words, whether they fall under that ER pattern, right? Or it'll have digraphs or digraph, and you need to listen and sort the words in that way as we move up. Today, I'm just showing you the emergent one. It does get more complex, but the same activities happen all the time. So it's really easy if you're in a classroom of ones to threes, one group can be doing the same activity as the other group, just with different words. Any um, wonderings about those hands-on type games? I uh, was just wondering, so with a lot of this stuff having access online for us, so I'm doing grade three, four virtual. Yeah. Um, my teaching partner went to the four, eight. So I, yeah, that's um, smart. The, so the kids can't access any of the digital stuff. We, it, we're yeah, just kind of presenting it to them and then hoping we can together kind of come up with some uh, manipulatives for them to participate. Is that the idea? Yeah, because okay. they don't have on the Flyleaf website, when you go under online materials, students, they can access the books and they have some homework pages if you want to look at those and you can assign those. If any kid has printing and parents are asking for extra, you can okay. go to the homework pages, but only on the instructor side are the smart notebook files. That's not to say that you can't, uh, I'm not, I'm not techie. As you can see, I no love, better, like. um, <laughs> I love like, just go find the things and let's do this. Um, but if you're like familiar with jam boards, you can, um, you can create a jam board and then have students drag all those pieces down and you can okay. just share out the jam board. Um, and it, those things I don't think take long to do. So, and you have most of the pieces from the smart notebook anyway, that you can probably just copy and paste over. And we have a sample jam board coming at the end of this. We've yeah. got some pre-made templates that maybe you just want to snag on those ones. But I love the hands-on idea because when you said like, you're right, it wouldn't be fun. The kids just sitting there, move that one. Now move that, like you want them doing it. So that's what I, I've done in the past when we went virtual, said, just take some paper quickly, rip up, rip up pieces, put S T O P, put them on letters and then you do it quickly. Go find six pencils or six um, spoons, bring it over. We're going to do say it, move it. Even when they held up their piece of paper with the phoneme graphing and I couldn't see at all what it said, it didn't matter because they were writing it down into each of the phoneme boxes and they were taking part. So super important that they're, hands are on it. You're right. Just watching the screen would be real dry. 
Mm -hmm. Now, John mentioned about the smart notebook. We can share with you. Um, we have downloaded all of the smart notebook files into Google Slides already that we can share out with all of you. We can maybe, Cindy, we'll work on adding that into the folder. Um, but they're not as interactive as the, the smart notebook files. So you choose what you want to use. Um, and then maybe that's a little bit easier to convert some of those things into Jamboards too. Um, Kat, does that, is John, did I say that right? Is that okay? Um, Kath, thanks, John. Okay, Catherine? Yeah, I found using the Google, or no, the Smart Notebook way better than Google Slides this year, so. Yeah, I think I like the userness of, yeah. like the usefulness of the notebook. Um, it does have a lot of great user-friendly features so i just didn't like i know natalie joseph used google slides but i was like no i'll just use what's already provided it was pretty yeah. easy though yeah. straightforward yeah and as and you had access to the teacher guides so then you you had the ability to know all of the things you needed for those start notebook files so that's pretty handy if you have access to those um and i think like for catherine i know john like john is at his John, your partner is at his school, so you will be able to find those um, binders for sure for you guys. Um, okay, so our last piece then of our puzzle um, is then the connected to text. So this is the super important piece. We've talked about the phonemic awareness. Let's make sure students can hear those sounds properly and break apart words properly. We've talked about building that letter correspondence, letter sound correspondence together. What is the explicit skill we want them to learn? Then we've talked about some hands-on games. We've and we talked about mapping our sight words, hands-on games, and now we want to apply it to the text. And this is the piece that we've done the learning the most on in the last couple of years is we do all this amazing teaching for kids and then we don't have anything for them to apply their skills to. So you'll see on this slide, um, this is where those that piece falls apart. We said the application piece is where it falls apart. If we can't apply it to reading and then in turn apply it to our writing, we don't have mastery of that skill. Okay, so uh, the uh, green box here is where you're going to see the pieces from Flyleaf. So again, on that same um, website that Cindy applied, it has the emergent series one, series two, and series three books that you can access digitally for your students. Um, and then in the classrooms, uh, if you happen to be on an in-person one, there should be books within those buildings and please reach out and we can help you find them. Um, as well as you can see the connected to text piece there has the sentence piece, the cut up sentences that Cindy showed you there. Um, in summer learning, our focus really and truly is about closing those gaps in the phonological aware, uh, the phonics skills part. Um, although Flyleaf has a comprehension component, we really do want to think about trying to focus our skills in the foundational area, okay? Um, and so you also can see in the orange, the additional resources, you all have Lexia licenses and Lexia has decodables. Um, and then you can also make up silly sentences with your kids. You can Google, there's lots of um, reading A to Z has some free decodable or has some decodables on there too. Um, Measured Mom has some free decodables. Phonics Comics has some free decodables. So wherever you can find where those skills can be targeted in a sentence or in a story, um, that's where you're going to see the application from your students. Bob books has decodables too, like if you have access to those. So we really want to make sure that our students are immersing themselves in decodable text every single day they need to be reading. Because ultimately our goal is to get them through all the foundational skills so that they can then read any piece of text that you put in front of them. Cindy? Yeah, and the, and the little clock said every day. And that means the same book every day too, right? You could add a new book in midweek, but they'd still be reviewing that book from Monday and Tuesday because repetitive reading is gonna help them with some of that orthographic mapping. It's gonna help them with their fluency. So they, they'll love those books. You think they're gonna get tired, but they won't. The second weekend, they're still gonna be asking for dot likes to dig. So this is the time where you're gonna have to do something now. I wanna make sure you've bookmarked Flyleaf. I want to make sure you've got the books there. So you could either click here on the Flyleaf online right there and make sure it goes up and you bookmark it because I'd hate for after today you forget how to get there. And I'm going to go the good old Google way. Flyleaf. Okay. 
okay, when I get to Flyleaf, it's either a band, yeah, the band or the books. So if I just go right to the books, okay. Mine knows, it knows me too well. It takes me right to the, to the stories, but I, I'm gonna pretend yours doesn't take you right to the stories. All right, so you're also finding out right now, it's okay if you're not following along my slides, you're trying to bookmark Flyleaf for yourself. You're bookmarking it up at the top. You can see free ebook library. That's where the stories are going to be. But if you are able to see my screen under the resources, here's the model lesson videos how to play those games. We went through it pretty quick today, but if you wanted to re-see it again, the model videos will show you how to play, say it, move it, how to use those boxes for phoneme, graphing, mop, mapping, sound by sound, blending, word chains. As you get into the, the series two books, they get a couple extra, extra sounds and things in there. It's under the resources, the model lessons. But what we wanna bookmark is right here, the online materials, easy to find. Now we don't have to go searching for books. We've got it on our fingertips. You'll find the books in the schools and you'll find them online here. Go and keep scrolling down. There's our friend Dot. All right. So now I need an okay or a got it or a yep in the chat. If you've got it bookmarked, if I see enough, can you put in the chat yep or got it? Yep. Okay. I'm feeling confident about it. There's not much else to say about, say about that one, just that that's how we got it. Um, I did think that you might ask, but we only have three weeks, which books should we go to? And you're going to have to look at your phonics screener to be really sure. You'll notice most of your kids are missing the vowels, like I suggested, or I noticed a lot were missing the low utility sounds in the early elementary, they're missing they thought W goes D, right? That sort of thing. So there's some books for that. Um, I put down my quick Cindy thinking. If I looked at my phonics screener, I might notice the kids were missing vowels. I would wanna do these books, short I, short E, and short U. Because before that, A and O is already introduced, so I could touch on that. And each, day, each week, I introduced another vowel so that by end of three weeks, we really had our vowels. Or if I thought they were missing the high utility, I'd go further along in the, the low utility, sorry, further along to book 23, 24, and 25, and maybe look at X, W, and Z. Maybe Q would be one of the ones that they were tripped up on. That might be my focus. Or if I had two groups, like Jen was suggesting, one of the teachers is working on the vowels with their team, and one of us is working on the others. Um, there's also these great series one books, consolidation books. What I like about them is they have a tricky book, and an easy book with the same title. So if I were to choose it, they just review all these sounds. So it could have anything, vowels, I could be focusing on all of my sounds that we've learned. But Sunset Pond, Will is Up at Bat, and Just a Box are good books. They're kind of fun. They're fun because it's talking about the summer and baseball, right? It kind of went well. So if I was going to review anything, I would review with those ones. And then if a little higher on, I would go with Interesting Elephants or Amazing Snakes and Dog Agility because they're the consolidation books. Instead of just one book on TH and then another book on CH, maybe the students are ready to do a week of digraphs or maybe it has to stretch for two. There's also some good ones with silent E for the, the vowels. I once again noticed they were struggling on. Case of Jake's Escape, The Dog Gets Away. Summertime Camping Trip sounds like a great one for the summer. And Summer Fun at Duke Park. These are all really good summer themed ones that also focus on vowels. And I know that that's probably going to be where you see your needs is going to be in the vowels section. So that was just my thinking when doing it. I'd love to see as educators, when you guys have time to chat during the asynchronous time, that you look at a little bit of these titles, see what might work with your group. That was just my thinking on that one. All right, Lindsay, you're going to have to um, uh, just pause for one second while I get, open up the sharing again, okay? Yeah, absolutely. All right. We're okay, ready. any questions so far? That was like the real quick, here's what a good phonics instruction could look like. Here are some of the really components that we want to see in a phonics instruction and how you can best bang, get best bang for your buck. Any questions or wonderings or concerns or challenges or 
sort of so far. If you're familiar with Flyleaf, then some of this probably really wasn't new to you. Um, if you've never used Flyleaf before, then it may appear to seem a little bit like those are new words that I've never heard or those are new strategies I've never used. Um, and it can be daunting. But also remember, you do have two p educators in the room um, and lean on those people for each lean on each other for those pieces. OK, make sure check in with each other and see maybe somebody does have some um, some really good flyleaf background um, that they can share with you too if you're if you're new to this piece. This is also gonna if you tackle a little bit of this flyleaf now, it will be some really good help for you starting in September too. On this slide, we put down what possible ways you could do a five day schedule. It's just a draft. One way that I might do it: always reviewing at the beginning and then putting a different game on each day and then reading the story. You can take a look by clicking on that link of one possible way and make it your own. Also, Natalie talked about how at the end of each day, I believe it was at the end, there should be 20 minutes where kids are doing Lexia and being pulled out for extra Kilpatrick one minute activities. Another great time to do more blending, to do more CVC, CVs with the, with the magic E, depending on what your students' needs are. You can never do enough blending blending. So that would be our extra time during those 20 minutes while some are on Lexia. Blending is the, it's like the key that unlocks the door for reading for kids. As soon as kids can say the sounds, blend the sounds back together and say the word to themselves, they will start to do that more quickly as they read. And then you'll start to notice that they do that sort of blending piece in their head. And before you know it, they're actually have mapped that word into their orthographic mapping. And now they're just being able to read. So that's pretty awesome when you can see that transition. Cindy's right. going to talk about the shared folder. Would you like to see the treasure chest? Okay, just things that we thought you might like to use, which is also why you, you're going to want to save this, right? You're going to want to make a copy of this in case you need to go into it. So I just remembered we're going to add the um, smart notebook ones transferred over to the Google one. So you'll see that there. Um, there's chanting and blending lines. If I click in it, there's the videos on how to make the pure sound. Mm, and lots of CDC words and such to to blend and practice. Here is some Kilpatrick's one minute activities. If you notice, what did we do? We did K. So it would be like I opened up this page right here and had done K. And, uh, oh, sorry, went too far. Then there's the Lexia decodables. I, I know those were available online with your Lexia license. So we just have them downloaded already. If you just spent a week working on the vowel, throw this book up as an extra read aloud one time. Keep reading Dot Likes to Dig, but also you could add in Fix It Kit with the I sound as well. And, uh oh, oh, I know, I have to do the back arrow. And then we have the kids' lips down here, the, making the showing the mouth. If you're in a school, you might have them. If you have a smart board, you can flip it up. We've got the sample template of what it would look like for um, each day. It was just the stuff we talked about today, all pasted together onto one page. We have the flyleaf scope and sequence. And here's the templates. So there are some pre-made Jamboard ones that are in here. If you wanted to make a say it, move it one. There are some word chains ones. Take a look if you're a virtual, maybe it's something you'd like to use. Um, you could print off any of these things if you're in a, in a classroom or make something similar. Word chain letters, um, say it, move it, circle. You could draw that on a piece of paper really quickly as well. Don't feel like you have to do lots of photocopying, right? Make it, keep it simple. The kids don't need all, all the fancy. They just want your time and they want some of the practice. Okay, so that was our K to three maximizing your minutes. Is everybody ready to maximize their minutes for summer learning? <laughs> Clear as mud. Okay, so um, we there's like Sydney and I can hang out in this room for a minute too. If there's anything specific that you want to ask us, um, and then back in the main room as where Natalie is. If you had any other questions regarding the summer learning program um, that you need to, you can pop over there. If not, we say all the best and you're going to be great. The kids will love you and no matter what, they will learn something. So um, I know they will and uh, you guys will be great. Uh, I'd love to say that Cindy and I will be available <laughs> as you start, but we won't be. 
<laughs> um, but um, but have fun with it too. Uh, use it to practice some things and uh, and have a great summer if we don't see you. Uh, Catherine, you can stop recording, Cindy, if you want.